This laptop has six other models, but this one is the most interesting one. Let's review Asus VivoBook S15. This is one of the most interesting laptops in the market right now uh, because it has a, an OLED screen, a full metal unibody, and also an Snapdragon X Elite processor. And I think this is the most powerful Snapdragon laptop in the market right now because it has 80 watts of TDP in its most powerful mode. And because of that, uh, this video should be interesting to see. And also we want to talk about Snapdragon and Windows on ARM to see how well they improved the experience in the last six months. Let's start with the body and chassis design. As I said earlier, this laptop has a full unibody design and also it has a good build quality and I like it. There is nothing wrong with it and everything about it feels right. Uh, it has nice hinge. I like it. It has full size keyboard with RGB lighting on the back, but it has only single zone, which is okay. Who needs RGB on this laptop? And also uh, the trackpad is big enough, I like it, it's a glass trackpad and also it supports gestures like old days. You can slide to manage your brightness, your volume and also you can skip forward or backward in your videos when you are watching them, which is interesting enough. And also I should say, uh, you have co-pilot button here and I remapped it to uh, our good old uh, right control key with Power Toys application and it is just it feels right to be a control button. Why you change it to Copilot? I hate it. If you want a full video explainer about Power Toys applications and its features, just tell us in the comments below and we'll make a video for you. Also, this laptop has four USB ports. Uh, two of them are USB type A ports and the other two are USB type C ports. The type C ports support 40 gigabits per second speed, which is nice. And also we have HDMI here with HDMI 2.1 support to get 4 k 120 hertz video outputs also we have a useless micro sd card which no one will use and it's just occupying the space if you use micro sd just tell us in the comments below and you can also charge this laptop with a 90 watt type c charger easily without any problem and i like type c charging in this laptop for this section i can easily give this laptop a 10 out of 10 score because it just feels right and there is nothing wrong with it as about the screen this laptop has a 3k almost 3k 120 hertz OLED panel uh, with 600 nits of uh, brightness for HDR content and uh, 400 nits of brightness uh, for SDR content. And I just like this screen. It has a good color accuracy, good brightness, but uh, it lacks the matte display and it is too reflective as you can see on the screen. And I don't like this reflective screen, but it is okay because the brightness is uh, well enough and there is nothing wrong with it. But uh, one thing you should consider is this screen is 16 by 9 and 16 by 9 may be fine for everyone, but my own laptop has 16 by 10 aspect ratio. And when I came to this laptop, everything just feels too crowded it's too crammed and it is a little too frustrating for me to see this display for this laptop because a 16 by 9 is usually good for gamers not for students or content creators and this laptop is not aimed at gamers and 16 by 9 shouldn't be in this laptop and because this laptop has two other models s14 and s16 i expected to see the x Elite processor in the s16 or s14 model but they put it in s15 i don't know why and because of the aspect ratio i will take one score from it and give it 9 out of 10 but if it's fine for you for you, the score will be 10 out of 10. As for the performance, uh, as I said earlier, this laptop has a Snapdragon X Elite processor with a terminal naming of X1E-78-100 at 80 watts TDP. It's a powerful CPU if you want to consider buying this laptop, but there is some problems with it. Uh, before getting to problems, let me uh, tell you more about the laptop. It has uh, 32 GB of RAM uh, LPDDR5X, which is good, which is fast, which is enough. I think 32 gigabytes is fine for everyone now and then. And you should be fine with 32 gigabytes of RAM in the next five years. I said it, in the next five years. 
and also you can upgrade the SSD in this machine. Uh, it has uh, one terabyte of SSD in it, which is good and I like it. And uh, because of 80 watt TDP, uh, I think this is the most powerful Snapdragon laptop uh, we have right now. And as we saw in the uh, benchmarks, uh, the performance was uh, better than a lot of other Snapdragon laptops. Like in Cinebench 2024, we got almost 1000 scores, which is a uh, Core Ultra 9 score level. Uh, which is good and uh, in Cinemesh R23. Uh, R23 is not optimized for ARM processors, but uh, 2024 is optimized. Because of that, the difference between these two scores are a little higher than normal. And in R23, we got uh, more than 11,000 scores, which is good, but the Prism layer is not that optimized uh, like Cinemesh 2024, which is a native application. We also tested a uh, Geekbench on this machine and we got 14,000 scores in the Geekbench and almost 2,200 2, score uh, in single core in Geekbench 6. The SSD scores are 5 GB for the read and 3.5-3.6 uh, GB for the write, which is good. We also tested 3 Mark to see how well 3D applications and games will run in this machine and the time SPI score was around uh, 1,900 score. We tested uh, some games in this machine like Cyberpunk 2077 and as you can see on the screen, we tested this uh, laptop in some different scenarios. It is good to see Cyberpunk will run in this machine in Windows on ARM, but uh, the performance wasn't great at all. It wasn't playable at all. And I can't recommend you to play some games like Cyberpunk in this machine. But anyway, here are the scores and they are fine. The interesting thing to see is uh, the performance on battery is similar to the performance uh, on the charge uh, which is good and it means windows on arm has some potential to it and also we tested rainbow six siege in uh, some scenarios and in all scenarios uh, the performance was okayish uh, i played some games in rainbow six siege to see how it can handle the real game and uh, real world scenario uh, it wasn't only the benchmarks and in the real world, uh, the performance was almost fine, around 50 to 60 FPS, but there was some uh, stuttering, there was some uh, drop frame rates, and because of that, I highly suggest you to, uh, if you want to play just a little bit, just for a tiny bit of games, you cannot buy this laptop. This laptop has Intel model and AMD model, just get those laptops. It has four different models with four different CPUs. Just get that one. This laptop is not for anyone. Anyone who wants to play just one game, it is not for you. Which means the Prism layer is doing good, but not enough. And because of that, the performance was a little lower than we expected. Add for the content creation workloads, uh, in Adobe Premiere, uh, on the Prism layer, uh, we got 21 minutes and 18 seconds, which is not good, to be real. But at least we can run Premiere on this machine, and uh, I remembered uh, six months, almost six months ago in uh, some Acer Aspire laptop, we couldn't even run Premiere in this machine, in this kind of machine and this CPU. At least we can run Premiere, but at the cost of some uh, stuttering and lags. Uh, Adobe after effects didn't run at all and you can't even install some applications like adobe after effects and because of that i should say please if you want to uh, do a lot of works with your laptop and you are not certain about your workloads just don't buy windows arm devices uh, right now you just need to realize that a snapdragon x edit laptops are not ready. Windows on ARM is not ready. The apps are not optimized. Lots of apps won't even work. I couldn't play Apex Legends even with one frame. I couldn't run Apex Legends in this laptop. And if you just want a great battery life on idle or light tasks, you should get a Snapdragon X Elite. But in heavy tasks, it wasn't great too. But I can say the performance on battery was great and it wasn't the, that different from when the laptop was plugged in or on battery. For the performance, I should give this laptop a 6 out of 10 because I expected more. 
it is not good i think in my opinion but if we consider other snapdragon x elite laptops we should give it 10 out of 10 but for the snapdragon x elite processor it's a 6 out of 10 okay let's talk about speakers webcam and battery life as for the speakers i should say the speakers on this laptop are really good and i like them but uh, they are not that loud for you to hold the party you should uh, buy external speaker for if you want to partying with your friends it is well enough for you if you want to watch some movies or uh, some youtube videos like this one So this is the webcam quality of Asus Vivo S15 because it has a Snapdragon chipset. It can process images like your Android mobile phone, and uh, I like the quality here. It has 1080p webcam, and also it has some fun features. It has portrait lighting like this one. It has eye contact for two different scenarios: a standard and teleprompter, and it has background effects, which is good, and also it has creative filters like it is animated it is watercolor and it is illustrated it is so fun to use this webcam and also it has a windows hello and privacy shutter off which is good what do you think about the mic quality tell us in the comments below as for the battle life this laptop uh, gave us uh, in light tasks gave us more than 10 to 15 hours of battery life but if you want to do some little heavy tasks like adobe photoshop adobe photoshop uh, ran perfectly on this laptop without any problem even adobe illustrator adobe lightroom all of them worked per perfectly fine with this laptop but the battery life drain uh, was real and my battery life remaining uh, just fell to like two hours or three hours and it was too low i think and if you want to do just a little heavy tasks like applic in applications like Adobe Photoshop, your battery will go down like an AMD laptop. And I don't think it's worth it. But in conclusion, I can say this laptop is a good laptop. If you want to buy it, you can just go and grab the Intel or AMD one. They are a lot better than this laptop. They are more reliable. If you want to give this laptop an a score, we should give it 8 out of 10. But if we want to consider the CPU and give it a score based on the performance and the reliability, I think we should give it a 6 out of 10. What do you think about this laptop? Tell us in the comments below. And if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye.